In today's video, we explore One Deck Dungeon, a card game that's been ported to the digital world by Asmati Games. We'll take a few minutes here to teach you the game and give you an example of play here today on Legendary Tactics. So as we usually do here on Legendary Tactics, we're going to take you through the digital tutorial. And uh, so One Deck Dungeon's an interesting uh, game. It's simply done mainly with a deck of cards. Uh, and as you might expect from the title of the uh, the game. So um, I'm going to show you a little bit about what we're looking at here. Um, one of the first concepts we need to learn is time. And time is essentially uh, when time passes, we're discarding one card from the deck. And the hourglass in the corner here shows uh, what, uh, what that actually means in game terms. So we've got 38 cards left in this deck with five in the discard pile. And when time runs out, when the draw deck runs out, we have the opportunity to go to the next floor, the more dangerous floor. Um, and every turn, two time uh, passes. So two cards get uh, discarded. And, um, and then that gives us a couple of different actions, um, one of which is to explore and one of which is to uh, enter a room and have an encounter. Now, I'll just uh, take a quick uh, look at what we're look viewing right here i found this interface to be a little bit overwhelming the first time i saw it so i want to kind of make that uh, potentially easier for you right now um, so just looking at our character first of all this is our warrior she looks pretty tough um, the uh, dice here uh, or sorry the symbols along the uh, the left here um, the first is uh, the the strength value so that is the uh, the number of dice that we can roll. So we can roll four yellow dice. The next is agility. We have two red dice. Uh, the next one is, is blue. Um, I can't remember just at the moment what that, uh, what that represents, but I'll get to that. Um, and the, the six hearts here is our available health. If we ever take an, a damage equal to or greater than our health, we die. And that is the end of our adventure in one deck dungeon. So you want to make sure that you manage your health. Uh, the Frenzy Heroic Feat is a, kind of a inborn ability um, that uh, essentially in this case, uh, every time the warrior takes damage, they store uh, a black dice. That's what this black star means. And they can be used uh, to, to boost rolls uh, at any point you, you choose. Now, they can be used during an encounter. It's what the crossed swords mean. Apparel, which is the trap symbol there. Um, but it cannot be used in the final boss fight, which we will uh, get to uh, as well, or we'll explain a little bit more. Um, when you descend from to a new level, when the time runs out and you go down to the a deeper level of the dungeon, the skill that we have here is to heal two damage. It's called Second Wind. Now that one is not innate. Uh, that one uh, can be uh, replaced later if you so choose, and I'll get to that. Um, the Dragon's Cave here, um, this uh, essentially is the scenario. And uh, on floor one, you'll see this symbol here. It says to shield. That means that uh, when you're having an encounter or uh, tackling a peril, you need to overcome the shield uh, value first. So it has to be, um, this has to be done before you can do anything else. So that's important. You'll see how that works in a sec. Um, this other one here, um, you'll notice the little sword outline. It's the yellow uh, yellow dice. Um, you, this here, a, a yellow three or more. So the die roll has to show three or more in order to satisfy the condition here. Um, has to be placed here or the character will suffer one heart of damage. So that's uh, something to uh, keep in mind. The center part of this, this is the, the dungeon itself. Now, when it shows a torch, that means that it's uh, available to explore, uh, which essentially deal out cards to fill the empty spaces here. Um, or if there are cards here, then you can choose to have an encounter. You can open the, the door and see what's behind it. Now our level here, we're experience level one, so that means we can have one item. An item in this case is a, a boost to our, our stats to give us extra die rolls of a certain color and two skills, um, starting and basic skills, do not count towards this uh, limit. So that uh, second wind uh, is included, I guess, in, the, uh, in this. So we can have two additional skills on top of that. Um, we have one potion during setup. Potions are abilities with, 
where you can uh, spend one one potion token and get a, an ability but they can obviously run out uh, as, when you level up you get extra black dice sometimes as an encounter bonus and uh, it's going to require six experience to level up so that's going to be uh, something that'll come in play you can see it here i've got three out of the six already um, this is just a list of the general supply how much uh, dice and potions are available um, and this is our potion which is one of healing um, it can be used during battles or, or, or encounters or, uh, or during uh, encounters with perils. And we can heal three damage from uh, one here at the start of the turn around or two damage anytime. So you're going to generally want to use it at the start of your turn. Um, it's going to be more effective, but if you are stuck, then you can uh, use it in, uh, in a battle to uh, revive yourself a bit. Okay, so we're gonna click on the torch. That's what you do in this interface to uh, explore. And now we've explored. Great, uh, that was our turn. So time passes, two cards get discarded. And then we're gonna open a room and see what's, uh, what's behind it. And we've got this nefarious looking individual, this goblin. Okay, so the encounter card contains both the challenge to overcome and the rewards you gain from it. So the challenge is this, this part here uh, in and around the word swarm. Okay, this is what we need to uh, overcome and it, the consequences if we don't overcome them. And uh, we can always flee uh, as well, I should say. So when you open the door, if it's an encounter you really don't want to have, you can flee. There's no negative consequence to that. It just uh, leaves the door open and it... Uh, prevents further exploring in that space. You don't get any loot from it, but there's no downside necessarily to fleeing if you need to. Okay, it does end the turn though and time passes, but this guy looks uh, beatable, so uh, we're going to do that, especially when we look at the potential loot. So <clears throat> the item here would be an extra, so if we chose that as our potential loot, as our loot, then we would get an extra uh, yellow dice for rolling going forward. Um, we could choose this skill, which uh, in this case we sacrifice any three blue dice to roll one black dice. And black dice are wild, if you recall. Uh, so <clears throat> they're pretty valuable because they can go anywhere. Um, that's called the Shimmer Blast. It's only available during encounters, not during uh, perils. Or we can take the two experience points to potentially level up, which adds more uh, items and skills and potentially uh, black dice as well. So let's see what happens here. So we're starting the encounter. So uh, we pick up all the dice from that match our stats and we roll them. They go everywhere. We take a look. And uh, so now we have to fill as many challenge boxes uh, as we can, but the ones with the shields have to be filled first. Uh, if we can't fill the, the shield boxes, then we're pretty much stuck and <laughs> we can't place dice in any other boxes. So this uh, goblin uh, the goblin special ability is swarm so it's x equals four per open door and there's only one open door including this one so the value of this is four so um, you see the imprint of the sword there so that's yellow so we can place a yellow die here to satisfy this shield condition so we got that okay now we're going to fill the rest of the boxes now for the uh, small boxes, only one die can go there. For the larger boxes, any number of dice can go there. So uh, we're going to satisfy this one here with a three, just the minimum. That's great. We're going to satisfy this one because if we, if we don't satisfy the uh, condition, then this is the damage that we would take. So we, if we don't fill this box and satisfy its uh, condition, we would take two damage. That's what the hearts mean. If you see an hourglass, it means it costs you time and the deck uh, disappears faster, which means you have less opportunity to build up skills and and uh, collect skills and get loot and get gain experience before facing off against the final uh, boss. So we're definitely going to want to cover this one. And it looks like we need to use some agility as well. Um, okay, so we only have the one dice available that's over four. So there's one with two negative effects. We're going to obviously choose the one that has the, um, the the harsher effect we're going to block that um, you can tell that the dice has uh, f fit in the box when it kind of snaps into place it zooms in a little bit and makes a clicking sound so just so you know 
Um, and the uh, dungeon itself has a challenge box. So we have to make sure that that is uh, covered. We need at least a yellow three. Otherwise we take a damage. So we're gonna block that one. And we've covered everything except for this agility box here. Um, so the cost is one time that we're going. So one of the cards is gonna be discarded from the deck. We're gonna end the encounter. And there it goes. Now we get the choice of loot. Um, so we get a choice of the loot that I outlined earlier. I'm going to take the item and we're going to boost. Now we got five strength dice. That's awesome. So uh, now it's time to pick a different encounter. So time passes. Two cards get discarded. And then we go in here and we find a peril. Now perils are, are unique in that you only roll dice for the stat matching the color of the options. Okay, so I think we're, we're pretty strong. We can we can do this one. Oh, and we'll take a look at the potential loot. Now this is a, is a blue dice, but we're at our item limit because if you recall, we're level one. So we can only boost one our stats by one uh, die and that's what we've done. The skill though looks interesting. So the cost here is on the left and that is one yellow dice, but you gain a yellow dice with a value of six. This is the crushing blow. It can only be used during battles. Now, uh, or during encounters, I should say. So essentially this allows you to trade, say a, a one for a six, which is very handy. Also two experience points. So you can see how sometimes they're juicy choices as far as loot goes. Um, and so we're gonna enter this uh, spot. Now we have to choose one or the other. So we can either choose to dismantle it, which costs us a bit of time, but it's easier to hit. We only need to add up six uh, dice we, we're gonna be rolling five yellow dice and we only need them to total six that's pretty much a sure thing or we can climb over it um, we only have two agility dice um, but they need to add up to 11 so that's those aren't good odds so we're probably just gonna have to uh, dismantle it so we'll click on that time is gonna pass and we're gonna roll the dice to see how we do here and uh, we should be okay now the dungeon box for perils takes on the color that we chose. So we have to cover that one first, if you'll recall. Um, so we're going to drag that one over. Now it's a pretty easy bar to clear, but uh, we're going to place that one. Now, the other box needs a six, but fortunately it can take as many dice as we can take because it's a, a larger box, a wide box. So we're going to put this five. When, when you're playing dice into the larger box, it, you know it's kind of taken when it, uh, when it puts a little tiny die in the corner here. We're gonna do a bunch of overkill. We're gonna crush that cave in. And now we get to choose uh, what we like. Now we've already taken an item, so we're gonna max it out on that. So let's take, uh, let's take the skill. I like that skill. Our turn ends, time passes, and we get to see what's in here. And we've got a bandit <laughs> and the bandit uh, this is a potential loot, another blue dice, three experience, and this one where we sacrifice a, an agility dice in, in exchange to roll two, uh, two strength dice. This is the backstab, which can only be used during uh, encounters. So let's, let's get in here. Um, now this, uh, this ability dodge references something that uh, is another important thing, is that uh, if, you, if you want to, you can always uh, the, the tutorial will take you through this, but I just want to explain this. You can always sacrifice any two dice to create one black die, and black die again are wild. So um, you always have that choice. Um, the problem with dodge is that it means we have to sacrifice three dice, not two. So that's uh, that's going to be a, a potential problem here. So, all right. So that big box of eight was scary, but we rolled just enough to cover it. So we're going to put our agility dice into that and we cleared that one now there's no shields to worry about so we can just place these uh these die willy-nilly we're going to do the dungeons requirement and we're going to cover that one with that die now we have uh we have still an agility three and a and a five and a four here uh so we're gonna use our our skill you remember we just picked this up we're gonna exchange going to sacrifice a uh, strength die, a yellow die, for uh, a, a guaranteed six. So that, that's perfect. It gets us past that one. Now, unfortunately, 
Uh, we, we're not able to cover that agility space or the time space. So we're going to take one damage and one time uh, damage, I guess you could call it. <laughs> so, so a heart appears on the card. Uh, now, once again, if that ever equals or exceeds my health of six, then uh, the it's game over. So we have to be careful on that. Um, but the, her the heroic feat, the frenzy here, means that because we took a damage, we get a black dice ready to go that can be used as a reinforcement, I, I suppose, if you, uh, if you want to call it that. So uh, we'll use it in the next encounter. And uh, so for the loot, let's take the experience and we're going to level up because that's just enough to level us up to level two. All right. And that's the end of our of our turn. We're just going to take a quick look. So we leveled up. So now we have access to three items and three skills. We have added one black dice to the mix and we gained an extra potion for reaching level two. Now we need eight to level up beyond that. But hey, now we're getting some... Uh, some competence here we're developing as a character and we this uh, glooping ooze is our next uh enemy uh it's a you know it's the mascot okay so let's take a look at that potion so the potion has changed two of your non-black dice to be sixes that's pretty good uh so we're going to want to get that one um interestingly the reward for the uh, the item was an extra strength and an extra heart so it boosts your health um, going forward which is pretty useful so all right so this uh, this is the special effect for uh, this uh, glooping ooze is that uh, it cost me one time for each one rolled so you want to make sure that you're not uh, rolling any ones if you can help it now we're going to use our, our heroic feat here we're going to give ourselves a bonus three uh, and uh, we got uh, uh, we get a, um, a new black die now for every encounter, so that helps us out. Hopefully no ones. Oh, we rolled a one, so that cost us a bit of time. So let's now we need to get through the shield here, so that's good. Now we can use the heroic black dice um, to use up uh, there. So we have that uh, shield now cleared away, so we can place dice elsewhere. So we've got uh, that uh, one there. We're going to uh, use our crushing blow. Uh, so we're going to change that to a yellow six for that. Perfect. And we can also uh, cover the dungeon requirement with the three. Okay. And here's the conversion of it. They call it the heroic trick here. <laughs> and anyway, you can convert any two dice into one heroic die by dragging them over uh, to uh, the spot here that's flashing over here on the right. So we're gonna, uh, we don't need the agility dice, so we're gonna drag those over. And essentially it gives the value of the lower of the two dice. So it, it's not a roll. If you, as I put in a five and a four, so a four, black four pops out. Well, that's enough to cover this uh, yellow four. And yes, the blue five still uh, uncovered. It's gonna cost, it, uh, cost us a bit of time, but overall, um, we get away fairly scot-free. And we get uh, another potion here. So that is great. So, um, yeah, now the tutorial is going to leave me a bit on my own here. Um, and uh, if you make a mistake in the um, digital version here, there's the undo uh, button. But remember, once you've seen the dice or revealed new information, then you can't undo past that point. So the... Uh, um, anyway, so these potions can be spent uh, and I can spend like, them in any way. It's kind of a neat, neat thing. I can keep, do two healing potions and one heroism or I can do three heroisms or three healing or whatever. Any combination, you just spend the potion uh, amount and then you get that uh, awarded to you. So, um, so anyway, that is basically the game. Um, I'm just going to play through a little bit further here. Uh, to show you uh, basically how to descend to the, the next uh, level. Um, but this is basically the, the game and how it works. And uh, you can see we're not too far away from that uh, next uh, level, but I'll just show you how that would work. Now we're up against a uh, apparel here. Um, we can get a potion where we reroll all of our ones and twos and roll a black dice. That's pretty good. Um, or uh, gain another item. So uh, you know what? We're pretty strong in uh, 
destroying it here. We only deciphering it would be a bad idea. We'd have to roll a six in order to get through. And uh, and don't forget, we still need to roll that two shield there. So we've got uh, plenty of available dice here to make our choice. And uh, we cannot use the crushing blow skill because it's only can be used in uh, in encounters. But I think we're going to be okay anyway. We use the uh, black dice to uh, cover the shield. Then we can cover this here, uh, and we pass the rune puzzle. And so we can choose now. What do we want? Well, I think that potion's pretty good. So I'm going to take that. And uh, let's see here the next encounter. And so this, the gameplay on this, it, it, it is a little bit repetitive. I know that was a, com a complaint of the people who bought the, the analog version of the game, but I find this interface really speeds things along. So it doesn't feel like it overstays its welcome, actually. It's kind of a neat, uh, a neat way to go. Uh, this one, we're going to have to spend some time climbing around uh, because I don't think I can get to 14 on two uh, agility dice. Um, but it has a neat skill, so we'll have to grab that one. That one looks neat. Um, now, we can actually boost our, our dice as well. Um, we have up to three three items now, so we can add uh, another couple um, there. So let's see if we can pull this off. And we're going to beat the shield. And we'll use the heroic dice. That's just... I like doing the overkill, because there's other times when it's really not, <laughs> not uh, possible. All right, and we'll take that cool skill. There we go. And time passes again, and we're just about to go down to the, the next level. Um, and we've got a padlock here, a locked door. Um, we're going to have to bash it open, I think. Um, yeah, that one's a skill I'm not, I'm not going to be able to use. I don't have enough blue dice. But, hey, I'm always happy to take either the experience points or the, uh, the item. So let's... Uh, bash it open here and having that black dice is handy to get past the shield if, if nothing else you don't have to necessarily worry about that but either way let's just totally overdo it okay perfect <laughs> all right um let's take the extra item here all right there we go now the hourglass has hit zero so now we uh can click to descend you can actually stick around on uh, on an existing floor whenever you spend time for any reason a time token is placed on the stairs and for every three tokens that are there you take one damage it actually uh, can cause damage if you stick around collecting too much loot on a floor when you have the option to descend um, now the next one is going to be um, harder uh, because the the dungeon uh, accumulates uh, different uh, negative abilities. So now we've got a five requirement here as well. Uh, or sorry, the uh, sorry the um, these are other requirements here that, that there's a six. Uh, place a six here, or uh, get a, you know you uh, take a, a damage. You know that kind of thing. So um, so we'll just uh, go through and explore, and we'll take a look at the first one. And you'll find the encounters are a little bit harder. So um, this now we have this guy to face the skeleton. So if any boxes are empty, spend another two times. We have to do our best uh, to do that. Now we have an ability, uh, an item here. We've got a potion, spend two time and skip to the claim loot phase. That is pretty cool. Invisibility, I like that one. So let's just go through this encounter here. And uh, let's see here. So, um, so we need to cover the shield first. So we will do that. Now we don't have a lot of dice here. So let's see. Um, we can rerolls our ones and twos. We don't need that one per se. Uh, we're going to use our crushing blow to get that six looked after. And we can cover these threes up and this five up and that five up. But it does not look like we're going to be able to cover that uh, other uh, dice there. So I guess we can try and roll. We'll try and exchange here and get a black die. And oh no, I forgot. Yeah, that didn't have enough value anyway. Uh, yeah, so that is um, that's everything I can do. So I've got to lose two time and take two damage. Now I did uh, heal that uh, health when we went when we descended. If you recall my 
second wind ability here. And I'm definitely taking that invisibility potion because that is very, very handy. All right. So uh, now let's uh, let's just go here. This will be the last encounter. I just want to show you this cool invisibility potion um, here. So um, so this is a potential loot. So prevent a, a heart. And this can be used during the final boss fights. That could be useful. Um, and I just, I'm just going to show you this invisibility potion. So let's say we want to... Uh, Actually, uh, yeah, so let's say I want to just become invisible. It just spends a bit of time, and we just skip the encounter, and we'll just go right to the next one. Um, and that's basically uh, the game. Um, I kind of wanted to take you through at least a couple of the encounters here on the second level. They do get harder, uh, and then eventually you do get to the final boss fight, which is quite a challenge. So anyway, I hope this little tutorial walkthrough uh, helped you and uh, gave you some insight onto this neat little game. I think it plays really well on the digital interface. If you've played the hard copy, um, I think you'll find this uh, moves along in a much snappier way because um, all the bookkeeping is all looked after for you and the transitions and so forth. So um, you can, all the reshuffles and so forth. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, hope you got some value out of this video. And if you did, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe down below. We will see you here next time on Legendary Tactics.